Puccini always liked to base his operas on a thumping good plot from a play which had already succeeded in the theatre. And with Tosca, he had a winner. It was the play by Victoria and Sardou, written for Sarah Bernhardt, with the central character, Floria Tosca, a flamboyant opera singer. The story is set in 1800, the opera was written in 1900, which is nice for people who like to memorise dates, and it tells the story of the events in Rome when the forces of Naples were battling with the forces of Napoleon over sovereignty for the Holy City. Cavaradossi, whose sympathies are with, the, uh, are with the rebels, is painting a picture of Mary Magdalene in the church of Sant'Andrea della Valle. There, the fugitive, Angelotti, who's been part of the Republican Roman government, flees for safety and sanctuary from where he's been imprisoned in the Castel Sant'Angelo. Cavaradossi promises to hide him down the well in his garden and gives him materials to slope away and make himself scarce. In the meantime, Tosca comes in and is deeply offended to find that Cavaradossi has based his portrait of Mary Magdalene on Angelotti's sister, not on her. And she's got blue eyes rather than Tosca's dark eyes, and as Tosca says, give her a pair of black eyes, but not in that sense. Well, Baron Scarpia, the police chief in charge of the case against Angelotti, comes in pursuit of his fugitive and suspects that Cavaradossi and Tosca know where he is. And so in the second act, we find ourselves in Scarpia's office in the Palazzo Farnese. These days, it's the French Embassy, so I hope they've demolished Scarpia's in-house torture chamber. And there, Scarpia submits Cavaradossi to terrible torments to torture out of him, the whereabouts of Angelotti. Tosca interrupts this scene, and hearing Cavaradossi's cries, she gives away Angelotti's whereabouts as a way of saving her lover's life. But Cavaradossi is sentenced to death, and the only way that Tosca can get him off the hook is to promise that she will sleep with Scarpia if he will give Tosca and Cavaradossi a safe conduct to leave Rome. But Tosca isn't prepared to wait for the horrid denouement of this bargain, and instead she seizes a carving knife from the dining table and sticks it deeply into Scarpia's chest. He dies and she runs away to the castle where Cavaradossi is awaiting execution. Scarpia has fooled Tosca into thinking that Cavaradossi will be given a fake execution with blanks. In fact, he's instructed the firing party to use real bullets. And so when Tosca thinks that Cavaradossi has done a good job of acting to play dead, in fact, he's very dead indeed. And on hearing the footsteps of the police pursuing her up the steps of the Castel Sant'Angelo, Tosca leaves the building by the only exit available and jumps to her death.